special race for us because we won a stage there last year. It's gonna be just tough. It's fun, right? Yeah, it's gonna be really exciting and I can't wait to get stuck into it. Hello and welcome to GCN's preview of the Giro d'Italia Internazionale Femminile, or as it's commonly known, the Giro Rosa, which kicks off this Friday with nine stages covering 975.8 kilometers in central and southern Italy. It's the most prestigious and longest race in the women's pro calendar, and this year includes the longest ever stage we've seen in a women's pro race. Originally scheduled for June, it was of course cancelled due to the global pandemic, but the organisers have pulled together a great route that takes in Tuscany, Umbria, Lazio, Campania and Puglia. And don't forget, you can catch all the action on the Giro Rosa on the Race Pass on the GCN app. Sadly, there's no live coverage available, but we will have highlights after every stage, available in all Race Pass territories except Italy, Australia and New Zealand. Having won the race for the past two years, it's hard to see past Amblique van Vleuten as the race favourite. But is the route hard enough for her to put the sort of time gaps we're used to seeing? Or is it going to be the race for Elisa Longo-Borghini or Lizzie Dignan to shine? So before we get to who we think will be up there, let's have a look at the route. So the race kicks off again with its now traditional team time trial. It's 16.8 kilometers. Do you think it's long enough to be significant? Um, I definitely think you'll be able to see time gaps between the teams that have been practicing and you know, really drilling that team time trial because it is something you really need to practice. And obviously I have to say that, you know, Canyon Shram are really good in this discipline being world champions. So I think they'll definitely be up there. But from social media you've been seeing that Trek uh, Segrafredo have been practicing and Michigan Scott have been up there as well so it'll be interesting to see time gaps. Moving on we're in Tuscany of course and we start to get what the glimpse on stage two we've got the white roads we've got some gravel roads and it's it's something that's kind of on trend now isn't it putting gravel roads in, into a stage race um, from looking at this year's Strada Bianchi, which was just a phenomenal race, Mavi Garcia being away, Annemiek van Vleuten catching her, but also Anna van der Breggen has been a former winner, Elisa longo -Borghini. Do you think it could be decisive early on? Yeah, that? yeah, definitely. I don't think the gravel roads suit all the riders, so it'll be, I think it will play to some teams' favourites. Um, yeah, it'll be definitely add a little bit of uh, extra something into the race. We go from there to our first hilltop finish. So stage three already, and we get to Assisi. Now, because everything is pulled together a little bit last minute, and we kind of forgive the organizers for this, we don't have a huge amount of information when we're recording this as to the severity of some of the climbs. So we've, we've been digging in on various yeah. um, resources that we could find. Assisi, quite a short, sharp climb, looking at the way Mariana Voss was going on those sort of climbs last year could be a, a perfect stage for her this Yeah, one. definitely it could be. And I think, yeah, a rider like her, it's definitely not long enough for, you know, a pure climber to win the stage. But yeah, definitely a punchy climb. Um, there will be definitely a select group making it to the top. We go from there, stage four, we go from Assisi to Tivoli. And this is now, this is a significant day, isn't it? Again, it's a hilltop finish in Tivoli, but it's, this is the longest stage that we've seen in a women's pro road race. And, and that's important, isn't it? Yeah, this is the longest stage the women have ever had. Um, and I think they're definitely gonna, you know, put a really good performance out there and it'll be fireworks the whole day. So it'll be a really exciting day for the women and they'll be really looking forward to it. It's it's quite rolling as well throughout the day. And Cecilia Trub Ludwig adds in, in the style that she only ever does, isn't it? We, we love her yeah. uh, in her interviews, but she's been very vocal about the significance of, of the length of this stage because not only this longest stage, but the Giro Rosa, has to have special dispensation, doesn't it, to be, um, normally it's 10 days, it's one day shorter this year, but we've got to start to see this growth and progression, haven't we? Yes, I think it's definitely the last few years we've made a massive jump, you know, more races, longer races, and it's it's definitely growing and it's, it's going in the right direction. Then it's the turn of the sprinters. Now our sprinters, you, you're going to have that in every stage race, aren't you? It's significant, and this year, 
for the likes of Kirsten Field particularly, but for me coming into this uh, Valcar Travel and Service, Elisa Balsama, the Italy home home rider, yeah. she's sprinting really, really well. I mean, they're not flat stages, but they're fairly lumpy. But as a sprinter, you've got to be an all rounder, haven't you? Yeah. In in, on, in women's pro cycling. Yeah, there's not. Um... You know, there is some big climbs that the sprinters will have to make it over and I think um, that's probably something they, they have been working on, knowing this race is coming up, probably working on their climbing um, so they can make it to the to the finish of the race. And I definitely think, you know, Balsamo will, while well, we've seen in the European Championship, she's got a really good sprint on her, but also Kirsten Wilde as well. Um, haven't seen so much of her this year, but I guess um, she was probably working more towards the track um, with Tokyo, but that's obviously been postponed, so it'll be interesting to see how she's going in the sprint stages. Moving on to stage seven, th this has the, that day of anyone that's lost time early on um, looking to potentially get into a break, kind of like Lizzie, the sort of stage Lizzie Banks won last year. But also, as we get into those final um, three days... This looks to me like one of those days of a, of a long range Lucinda Brand attack or a long range Anna van der Breggen kind of move. Yeah, definitely. I think Lizzie Banks has shown really good form um, this year and I definitely think, I'm not sure what stage it'll be, but she's definitely going to do something uh, spectacular. And also, you know, she got a really good result in the race last year, so that'll give her some really big confidence going into this race. On to the final two days. Stage eight, so we go to San Marco La Catala, and it's a hilltop finish again. It's a, it's a rolling stage. We've got a big lumpy um, climb in the middle before we get to a hilltop finish, but it's only 91 and a half kilometers. So this is the sort of stage, um, as a sprinter, you kind of probably look at it and they're like, oh, because yeah. these are the sort of stages that can just go from the gun, aren't yeah. they? From experience, uh, the shortest stages have always been the hardest. I'm not sure why, but... Um, yeah, there's definitely going to be fireworks kicking off here and everybody's going you know, to want to do something. The final day, Motta Monte Corvino, this is a, this is a circuit stage, which is, which is interesting. We go up, we go, got four times up the climb and f looking at the length of this, and again, we don't have the, the finite details of, of, of that climb, but this is the sort of day, if Annemiek van Vluten is, is really maybe the time gaps are slightly smaller um this is the sort of day again where she she'll be looking to really put some some significant time into everybody yeah if it is close it wouldn't surprise me if you know she'll go from the gun or go on the first climb but yeah definitely it's going to be a really interesting one if the time gaps are close but then you know it could be uh, the complete opposite if you know she's winning by quite a margin we could see a fight for second and third so yeah it'll definitely be a really interesting day yeah as we always say the cycling's not a done deal anything anything can happen and and there are some some really informed riders so if nothing else the Giro Rosa it always gives us excited racing doesn't it yes definitely okay that's the route let's put our top tens uh, head to head quite significant I think this you can see I've gone bold and brave, can't yeah. you? Because it, you can always go for the obvious. And I must say, we've both been, since we started putting this together, I think we've both changed our top tens. Uh, oh, I've changed mine so many times. <laughs> been sitting scrambling away doing it now. But I've gone for Elisa Longo Borghini as a victory because if when you, when you look at Elisa's um, sort of history um, in the Giro Rosa, it's quite significant because she's been runner-up on various courses this is very much her race she's been queen of the mountain she's been she's very rarely been outside the top 10 or she's been really really close and just looking at her form and looking at the way she was riding for lizzie Dygon in, in the gp plouet and then looking at la course where she was just phenomenal the european road championships as well and just because i think for me the lack of the stelvio the zonkalan and those sort of climbs it just looked my heart just says it Elisa. does play into her favour, I think, and yeah, as I said before, there's a wind just knocking on her door. And I think it's definitely going to be this race if it is going to be won. Just from the form that she's had coming into these races, I think she's she's going better than she has, ever has been. So yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I've got her in second place though. So now your top pick, you've gone for for Anna Meek, and and looking at, at Anna Meek's form 
this season as well. I mean, she was unbeaten, um, you know, up beginning of the season through lockdown. And then when she came back in, it took to the Dutch nationals with Anna van der Breggen taking that victory before she sort of lost a race and she, since she took that title. Do you think it could be significant as well that she's moving to Movistar next year? Do you think that might play in? It can be very interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays, you know, if the team, you know, still want to fully support her or, you know, if she's already looking ahead. Um, but, you know, I think she's quite capable of it on her own. Her legs will just come to their own on the mountain, so, yeah. It's, it seems as well, looking at the last races, and we talk about the high mountains, and, and when we look back last year, coming into those climbs and literally going from the bottom of the mountains, but she's shown in races like Strada Bianchi and, and, and other races that she doesn't need the high mountains, does no, she, to definitely. still be to yeah. still be up there and still be able to, to take yeah, a victory? Yeah, I think she's a rider that doesn't matter what the course or what the train, you know, she's always got the legs um, and really got the head for it. And I know like having won it twice before, I know she want to win it the third time. So yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, my, my head says Van Vluten for the victory, but my heart's going with, <laughs> with Longa Borghini. Now, um, let's just talk about our podiums. So I've got Mavi Garcia up there and, uh, and for me looking at Mavi and looking at her progress we didn't have her in the Giro Rosa last year because she broke her collarbone just before the race but again coming into the, the back end of the season the, the, the start of the season again um, that break in Strada Bianchi where yeah. we were we were just all rooting for her and it just she finished second to Van Vluten in that one doubling up in the in the Spanish Nationals with the road and time trial uh, victories in that one but we come into the Giro Rosa don't we with with the tour of the Ardèche and she's she's won stages and as we kind of put this together was leading in the in the overall in the tour of the Ardèche and that is a tough tough climbing race isn't it yeah definitely is I think yeah having seen the form that she's on this year with Strada Bianchi and you know she put up a good fight just to stay with um, Van Vluten until the finish so yeah I think she'll definitely be up there maybe stages and um, yeah it'll be really interesting to see your third place pick yeah Cassia Numadonna I think from La Course I think yeah I think like Lisa Longo Borghini there's just there's a win around the corner for her and I think yeah this is definitely going to be the race and I think she's going to be extra motivated to do something really special now I've got Anna van der Breggen up there, just ahead of Demi Demi Vollering. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about um, Demi Vollering in a moment. But Anna van der Breggen, she's saying she's going to retire at the end of next season. Um, and she's she's won this race on a couple of occasions. And that mountain stage last year where Van Vluten tried to get um, Amanda Spratt on the podium and almost gassed herself on that, on that climb, really steep final climb. And Anna van der Breggen was phenomenal. For me, it had echoes of, of La Course where Van Vluten caught van der Breggen right before the line. And, and Anna van der Breggen for, for Bull Dolmans, she comes in as taking European time trial titles. So she looks again like she's on really, really good form coming into this. Yeah, she is. And especially being her last, one of the last seasons of racing, she's going to want to do something extra special, special. So it could be, you know, the last time that she races this. So, yeah, I think she's going to be extra motivated as well. And she's another rider that doesn't matter what the course or terrain, she always seems to have the legs on the day. You've got her up there and forth. I've got her a little bit lower down, but Lizzie Dignan. And looking at looking back through, through Lizzie's Giro Rosa career, She's been 15th, but back in 2009, that was the best result I could see in the general classification for Lizzie. La Course, GP Plouet, she's she's on phenomenal form, isn't she? Do you think potentially with the lack of, of really high mountains, I mean, we know Lizzie can climb the mountains, but do you think that lack of the big high mountains, this could be that perfect opportunity for her this year? Yeah, it's definitely going to play in her favour. Um, I think, yeah, this is definitely going to be a race she's going to excel at. Um, yeah, I just don't know if she'll be able to make the podium, especially with, it'll be interesting to see who they work for in the team, if it's going to be Lizzie or Elisa Longa Borghini. So I definitely think both of them will be up there. I was going to say, you thinking Elisa would be like, mm, no, it's my, my, <laughs> it's my turn. It's my turn yeah. now. Uh, Demi Vollering. I want to talk about Demi Vollering. Parker Tell Valkenberg, young rider, 23, uh, seems to be benefiting this season from Lorena Wiebes moving on to Team Sunweb. And Demi had a great season last year. She made a lot of progress. La Course, 
I mean, we saw her. She really had to dig deep for that for that podium, didn't she? And she looks like she's in, enjoying growing into that role of team leader. Yeah, definitely. I think it's um, definitely played in her favour. Um, you know, taking the lead role, and she'll have the support of all all her teammates behind her. So yeah, I definitely think she's in a really good place and a really good setup for her as well. Also in our top ten, we've got I've got Lizzie Banks. So we had the we had the Lizzie show, didn't we? In in, in GP Plouay, and she won a stage last year. And for British fans, she's she's again she's come into cycling quite late. She's taken a break from sort of her studies and being studying to be a doctor. Um, one of very quite a few doctors in the in the women's oh, yeah. uh, pro peloton. Um, Lizzie, that ride with Lizzie Dyingley and GP Pluer, that will do a huge amount for her confidence. Because she took that stage here last year in Giro Rosa, didn't she, from a breakaway. But it's when you get into that that world tour peloton like something, a single day race like GP Pluer, that kind of signals your arrival in a way. Yeah, I think she's a really confident rider. She's not scared, you know, play her cards, go in the breakaway. And she is, she is super strong. So I think this race, you know, she'll have the confidence that she had last year, you know, winning a stage. I think, yeah, she'll definitely do something brilliant in this race. We've both got her in the top 10 and we've got to because, you know, everyone loves her to bit. Cecily Trubludvig of um, FDJ, uh, Akitan Futura Scope. And she won in Giro della Emilia, so she she's already won a, won a race. I think she's almost looked a little bit frustrated in the last couple of, of races and she's been the best young rider in Giro Rosa in the past. Do you think FDJ have got enough behind them to work for her on, on a on a nine day race yeah, like I'm, this? I'm not sure if the team behind her are strong enough to to you know help her to win. I don't know if they've got you know the domestiques that say um, a lot of the other teams have but as a rider I think yeah she could potentially take a stage stage in the race. Another doctor, Erica Magnaudi of Sarah Tizit, WNT. You've you've got her up there in in the top ten. Phenomenal climber, isn't she? Yeah, she is a really good climber. I think yeah, this race obviously has quite quite a lot of climbs, but not the mountains that we're used to seeing her. You know, excel at. One rider that we haven't got in our top tens, quite interesting, is Mariana Voss. And if you if you look at Mariana Voss, twenty five stage victories. She's got in this race. She's been the overall winner on three occasions. Is it significant that neither of us have gone for her in that in that top ten? Do you think Mariana might target stages again this year? Yeah, I think she'll definitely be going for stages rather than the overall GC. I think some of the stage finishes will really suit her. Um, but yeah, definitely in my, my personal opinion, stages. Yeah. And it all remains to be seen. The other rider we haven't mentioned, of course, is Amanda Spratt, and uh, she will step up next year as the as the leader of uh, of the Mitchelton yeah. Scott team. Does she potentially, Amanda, maybe have not enough racing in the legs for, yeah, for something think, like this? Especially just being in a team with Anne Van Vloot, I think you know she's probably always working for her. So next year will definitely be quite nice for her to you know take the step up. And it's always easy for us to sit here and predict it, but the race isn't all together. It could be completely different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's who we think are going to be up there this year. It is, of course, the next round of the UCI Women's World Tour. Let's have a look at the standings ahead of the Giro Rosa. So the Women's World Tour standings after La Course, Lizzie Dydening moving into the lead with 808 points, just ahead of Annemiek van Vluten with 580. Going into La Course, it was Leanne Lippert of Team Summer, but that was leading overall. She now drops to third on 540, with Mariana Voss, Lizzie Banks, Elisa longo Borghini, Mavi Garcia, Arlena Sierra, Amanda Spratt and Demi Vollering, your top 10. So after GP Plu and of course Lizzie Dyden moving into the lead in the Women's World Tour, do you think it's going to be even more significant with the with the race calendar and the way the world has gone this year to take the the overall victory in the World Tour? Yeah, definitely with a select amount of races, I think you know all the teams, all the riders want to be racing. So I think for Lizzie, it's been quite extra special this year just to take a, quite a big lead already on that. Now let's hear from some of the riders. Hi, I'm Lizzie Dyken. Um, I've just arrived in Grosseto in Italy for the start of the Women's Giro. Um, we're here a couple of days early to do a bit of a TTT recon. I think that stage, the first stage, will be really important for our team. Um, it's a chance for us to put our marker down and, and hopefully get an advantage and, and get uh, well on our way to a pink jersey. Um, that's obviously the goal for us to try and win that jersey. Um, I'm here to support Elisa Longo Borghini. It's clear that it's been a massive goal of hers during her career. And I think that this year she's in incredible form and she has a really strong team behind her. So 
that is our hope for the race. Um, I'm just looking forward to having eight hard days of racing ahead of the World Championships. Um, I'm not really here to come away with any results personally, I'm here for the team. So I'm excited to be able to just work really hard um, and commit and, and try and deliver Elisa to that win. I do believe that it's gonna be a very difficult race. Actually, I've never done Giro, uh, feeling that I'm, I still have some extra energy left at the end of the at the end of the race. Um, so I do believe that, especially in this year where we missed quite a lot of racing at the beginning of the year, um, the pace will be very hard and high from the very beginning. Uh, there are quite a lot of teams which actually might go for GC victory. Of course, Anemic Van Vleuten will try to defend her title. I would say that this year racing has been a little bit different in comparison to the previous years. I feel like everyone is a little bit more nervous and everyone wanna get a result because we don't know how long are we gonna be racing for. So that gives like a um, extra motivation for so many riders to perform well. So it's a pretty special race for us because we won a stage there last year and we really want to go back and repeat that success. Um, we start off with the TTT and that's such a special thing to get on the podium because it's the only time when you can get your whole team on the podium together. So. We're going to go really hard on that and of course if you win that you get the pink jersey and then you can defend it. So that's a big goal for us. Um, this Giro is quite different to previous years. There's no long mountain climbs, what with us being in central and southern Italy. But it's just such an arduous race. Every day they just put hills in for seemingly the sake of it and there's barely an inch of flat. The, the biggest GC day looks like it's going to be stage eight, um, where there's a longish and very steep climb up to the finish. And I think that'll kind of be um, one of the defining moments of the GC, but there's definitely points where you can lose the GC before that because it's just savage. Every day is savage, but we're looking forward to it. We've got a really strong team. We're gonna take our chances and take our opportunities when we can um, and just race the way we always do, um, race aggressively and just have fun out there. It's a really hard course this year with uh, almost no flat stages. Maybe the fifth and the sixth are a bit more a sprinter stage. So that's my objective for the week. Uh, all the other stages are for our climbers and um, I think we have a really good chance with our climbers to have a good GC. And that's our biggest objective, of course. I'm really excited to start this year's Giro Rosa. Actually, it's eight years ago that I did my last. And um, I know that normally the race stays mostly in the north of Italy. Whereas this year we're gonna move from um, yeah kind of north down to the more south part, close to Naples, and the routes look uh, really challenging and uh, with a super exciting second stage, I guess, where we find some Strade Bianche, and uh, yeah, I'm super excited about the stage actually. I um, really hope to find myself in a breakaway of the day maybe once and be able to go for a stage victory. And for the rest of the tour, I will try to help my teammates, my climbers as much as I can and support them in the best possible way. I'm super excited and, and I'm looking forward to start uh, uh, the Giro Rosa. Uh, this year is for sure, it has been even more a challenge for the organizer to make this race happen. So I'm really proud that uh, my country can host this race. Um, it will be really interesting because we are going to race across a part of Italy that, that I actually don't know because we are going to the south. There will be not uh, the long climbs of the north of Italy but for sure will be not flat at all and not easy at all. <laughs> Giro Rosa time, finally, it feels like I've been thinking about it for uh, weeks and I've just been up at altitude above Martigny above the now cancelled world course but uh, regardless I've made really good use of my time there and yeah done a lot of climbing, uh, race replication so I feel like I'm at a bigger or higher level now than what I was for the first races and yeah, can't wait to get together with the team. We have a really strong team for the Giro. Obviously, Anamiek's won it the last two years. I've been on the podium, so we certainly want to try and replicate that. Uh, I think the parkour this year is challenging, um, but with no individual time trial, I think the time gaps are going to be less. I think it's 
really hard almost to pick that you know one key stage that's going to decide everything we have five uphill finishes uh, you know we're certainly not going to be rolling around Rome sipping champagne I mean the last stage we essentially go around a mountain uh, five times and finish at the top so we're really not going to know the winner to that last stage so yeah it's going to be really exciting and I can't wait to get stuck into it that's it that's our preview you can catch all the action every day on the gcn race pass unfortunately the giro rosa isn't covered live yet so there'll be highlights after the stage and that'll be with myself and danny Rowe, baby Rowe permitting because we have got a significant arrival perhaps due during the giro rosa and that is available everywhere except italy australia and new zealand make sure to watch because it is going to be a fantastic race thanks for watching